Hello Stampers! My name is Linda Bedinger and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator in Denver, Colorado. I'm so glad you could join me today. I have another Christmas card for you and it is a fun fold, uh, a little different, and um, uh, it's using the merriest moments um, stamp set and dies which came out, I think, in the uh, in the catalog June to December, and um, I'm using it a little differently. So let's just get started. Here is my card, and this card is done on a single layer of basic white using some designer series paper, and I use the Blackberry Beauty. Uh, specialty designer paper and the way this card opens is like this and so we have used the die differently and made it the opening feature of our card on the inside I repeated my paper added a small place here white so that you could uh, put in your message put a few decorations on it and that is the card now this time I'm going to mix it up just a little bit. I'm changing the background paper. Uh, it's still sticking to the um, Blackberry Beauty Suite. So what we need to make this card, this is a piece of basic white that is four and a quarter by five and a half. So this is like half of an A2 card. And that is our backing piece. And this is the Thick Whisper White. Then I switch to use this background paper uh, here. This one is four by five and a quarter and is going to layer on top. Then I used a regular card size of Mossy Meadow and I folded this in half. This is just a regular four and a quarter by five and a half, <laughs> eight and a half by five and a half scored and folded at four and a quarter a regular standard A2 size and I'll show you how we're going to use that. Then uh, we have this paper which is a bigger pattern of sort of this to back our sentiment on the inside and the outside just to add a little contrast. I have then my two pieces of white for the inside and the outside. I have a piece of scrap of Blackberry Bliss, and then I have scrap of, um, and you need a pretty good size scrap of this uh, old olive. And so what I've done is I've got three different colors of green going on here. This background piece that opens in basically is our, our aperture for the card is the Mossy Meadow. Then all of the leaves, except this one, and I left it on here so I could show you. I started by using Garden Green, stamped on Garden Green, um, to, to do the alternate leaves, but I didn't ultimately like the way it looked. It was better matched to the tone of the Mossy Meadow to use the Old Olive but stamp it in Garden Green. So I've got Garden Green ink going on, and then I've got um, Blackberry Bliss ink, and my three greens are Mossy Meadow, Old Olive, and then stamping in Garden Green. And I think that gives us enough co contrast and interest that gives this card both dimension, different colors. I think it adds to the texture of the card. So that's what I used. Now um, on this one, so we'll have to do some stamping. Um, and the piece of Blackberry Bliss is to make these berries. And I'll show you, I've done a couple of them ahead of time. And uh, using the gold color here, I have stamped those berries in Versamark and then used my gold embossing powder to make these berries that I'm going to put on the front. And they've got this little piece cut out here uh, that is like makes it look a little bit more like a berry. And that's what this piece of uh, Blackberry Bliss is used for. All right, and uh, so let's just go ahead and show you what we're going to do here. There is no ribbon on this one. 
Uh, I think there was enough going on here. I didn't need it. So the very first thing I'm going to do is take my uh, designer series paper and attach it to the white card base here. And so here we go, centering this piece on the front of this piece of basic white. There we go. And that is all ready to go. Now, uh, let me show you the dies and the stamp set. This is the stamp set. Uh, Merriest Moments is what it's called, and I think it's the Merriest Moments Bundle. And the dies are called Merriest, Merriest uh, frame, Frames Dies. And so I used A Joyful Christmas to You and Yours. I used both sizes of the Pine Bell. I used all three sizes of the Holly Berry or the Holly Leaves. I used this leaf, and I used those berries, and I think that is all I used from the stamp set. Now, the dies, there are 16 dies, and all of the ones that I use today are on this card, so I'm going to show you here. This is the outside of all of these beautiful leaves around a frame, um, and that is this big die, and we're cutting that one uh, out of the mossy meadow. Then this little stitched label die here, which is pretty good size, you can see fits on here, and I did that in the white. Then I used all three of the holly leaves, I used the two pine leaves, used this um, other kind of leaf, I don't know what it is, and then these um, dies for the berries. And so that's what I did. Now, so let me show you what we're going to do here. We've got this piece attached here. I think it's time to do our stamping. So the very first thing I'm going to do is stamp my sentiment. And I've got my Blackberry Bliss uh, stamp set here. And I've got my stamp right here. And I'm going to ink that up. That's a photopolymer, so we need a cushion. So I'm going to grab a cushion, and I just re-ink this so it's nice and juicy. And hopefully that's straight. By the way, if you're ever concerned about not getting it on there straight, use your Stamparatus. It just makes all the difference in the world, and if it doesn't stamp right the first time, you can just do it over and over until you get it right. There we go. We've got a nice stamp on there for that, and that piece can now be mounted. No, it can't. Not quite yet, but that will be mounted on this, so I'm going to set those two aside. Then the next thing we need to do is stamp our leaves and our berries. So I'm going to take this piece of old olive and I have my garden green stamp pad here. And again, these are all photopolymer, so I'm going to want the cushion. And here is the smallest of the holly leaves. And I'm going to just do that a couple of times because I like having extras just in case I feel like I need to tuck one more down than I had originally planned. So there's actually quite a few leaves and you don't have to do multiples of this, but um, I like the fail-safe nature of that. So this is the largest of the holly leaves. And when you have the cushion under this, it just does a beautiful job on these stamps. All right, and then we have one more holly leaf that is the middle size. And what I did with these is once I got them stamped, I just cut the little pieces of paper around them and then I could put all of the leaves on my die cutting machine and do one pass and get one complete set of leaves. 
Okay, next is, let's see, this one that is this kind of round leaf thing. This is such a pretty little piece of greenery. And as long as you set these apart far enough that you can get your dies around them, you can set these in there pretty close. Um, and usually, like I say, if I'm going to make one card, I'm probably going to make ten. So I always use the extras up before I'm done. Now this is the littlest pine bough here. And I'm going to add that right here. There we go. And then the largest pine bell. You see, you really do need quite a bit of paper. And I think this is about three inches wide. Yeah, about three inches wide and then 11 inches long, the length of a piece of paper. So I got like almost three strips. You can get three strips out of one piece of paper if you're going to make multiples of this. And there's my largest pine bell. All right, and then once I've got that done, I've already die cut mine. So there's my leaves all ready to go. And I've cut multiples so that I have plenty on hand in case I decide I need an extra one. Now, on this piece, which is my Blackberry Bliss, I used my anti-static tool and any anti-static tool that you have will work and my Versamark ink also which I just re -inked. and I'm going to use my berries here and I'm going to stamp several of them And I will say that when you put your embossing powder on this, it kind of covers up this little dot hole here that makes it look like berries. So immediately upon running this through my heat tool to dry the embossing powder, I just used my pick tool here to open up the embossing so that I could see through to the back Blackberry Bliss paper on the back and it makes a big difference and I'll show you that on the ones that I have here. Um, so that is what you do with, with that and then like I said I used my gold embossing powder and I'm just going to go ahead and emboss these so that you can see them. I think I ended up using four on a card three on the front and then one on the inside. So let me grab my spoon, but you'll see when I put the powder on this, those little holes in the berries kind of disappear. You can see you can't see them much. Now they do show back up a little bit once it's done and you take the excess off. I'm going to go ahead and heat set these and then I can show you exactly what I did to reveal those little dots again. So I'll quiet the video while I heat set this. Now I'm going to bring this up to the camera so you can see. You can just barely see those little dots. Let me get it right up here so you can see. So what I did was I came back down. I can see where this little dot is supposed to be. And before this dries completely, I'm just going to open up that little hole that's supposed to be there so I can see the back Blackberry Bliss in the background. If you do this right after you've heat set it, it's still pretty easy to do. The, the stuff is dry, but you can see the difference. Now you can really see those little, those little dots in there. Okay, and then I just die cut those out. Now, here are the ones that I've already done. 
So I've got four or five of these done just in case we wanted to add an extra one. So we've got plenty of material here. All right, so the next thing is the die cutting. How did I get this to open up like a card? So if I take this largest die from this set, and if you look at this die, you're going to see that this end is not uniform. Um, it's lower here, sticks out a little bit more here. These sides kind of don't work um, because it's high here and then sort of narrow. But if you look across here, this is almost flat. It kind of works. So what you're going to do is set up your die so that, let me show you from the back side. These are the holly leaves. And I want part of those holly leaves to not be cut by this. So I'm going to set this on here so that every single bit of it is covered by this card. I don't want it sticking out on either side. So it's sticking out here, so I'm going to move it down. And then I'm going to move the card down a little bit here. And maybe a bit over until I can see the tops of both of those holly leaves. I can see this piece, this piece, and all of those. And when you cut there, it's not going to cut through, and it's going to leave that as the opening or the aperture that you need for, uh, for this card. Now, once I've got that set, turn it over here, put a little bit of tape on it, and you will have to run this through your die cutting machine a couple of times. And what I did was I ran it through three times. One time like this, one time like this, and then once like this or like this so that you get those angles because you are cutting through two pieces of cardstock. And this one of those times I did put a shim on. I ran it through once without a shim. Then I ran it through a second time with a shim so it would add additional pressure to get down. And then one more time for good measure. And then I pulled it out and this is what you get. So there's my leaves cut and all of the pieces have been pulled out, I think. <laughs> I see one right here. There we go. And you see here the, the holly leaves look like they cut out just perfectly and yet on the inside they're attached. So now I've got enough, enough of attach. Now this part is, is flat across here and across here. And the way you deal with that is I put that on my card so that that part was just kind of right up against that top edge so it looks natural that it would be cut off there. And then you center this on your card and glue this back side down to our paper. So that's what I'm going to do next, and that is put this piece in place. And I used my dot runner because I've got all of these leaves I'm going to cover, and I want glue on all of them because I want this, because this is going to open and close, and this is what's anchoring this piece to the card front itself. So lots of glue. ran out of glue. <laughs> okay, there we go. Now this is the top. We have to make sure this is going to open. <laughs> so like this, and I don't want any glue on this side, so I'm going to run my fingers as I do on this dot runner 
to take out the glue inside the webbing of the die cut. And then I'll use my eraser, my gum eraser, to take out any little extra bits. Okay, now I'm going to center that so that none of these leaves along the side are actually off the card and getting very close to that top edge of the card. Oh, there's just a 32nd of an inch down from there. I'll bring that up so you can see it. Ever so slightly an edge above that green and I think that's close enough you won't even notice it. All right, so there is my card. Now then, if I open this up, I'm going to use my gum eraser to remove any extra glue that is peeking through because I don't want, let's see a little, couple little places where my pieces haven't come all the way out. Okay, I think that's on there just the way I want it. And I don't see any glue peeking through. And so we're all ready to go. Now, if your top sticks when you put it down, then you might have a little piece of glue you can't see. And if that's the case, make sure you clean it off from both sides. And it should be just fine. There we go. All right. So next, um, we need to add some of these leaves and embellishments. So we have our piece here. And this one was interesting. What I did was I tucked a couple of those pieces in between the uh, white piece and the designer series paper. This one right here is tucked in between those two. And um, this piece is basically down here, flat on the card, and this piece is raised on dimensionals. So I have to decide what pieces I want to go under this before I put it down. And this is where I wanted to use this large piece here to be coming down here. Not only does it fill in the card, but if I put a couple of these down here, these very largest ones, then it's the natural place to grab to open up the card. So if I put those two pieces right down here at the bottom, then that's where you will naturally grab to open this card up. So, and I can tell if I put my card across here, I want the stems underneath. So I'm going to need to put those on about like that. So now I can move that away. And the first thing I can do is put some glue on the back of this and actually I don't want the glue to come all the way to the bottom because we have to be able to open the card. So I'm going to set this one on the front and on these leaves so that this doesn't stick down. Now, I'm going to take this whole piece, noting that I'm here, here, and right in here. And I'm going to add some glue here to the top of this piece. There we go. And I'm going to add this right in here. And that should make a pretty good handle for opening up our card. Okay, now the rest of these pieces 
can be tucked underneath or between the two, but this one I want underneath this piece of paper here. So next I'm going to go ahead and glue this piece down. I'm going to make sure I've got plenty of glue on that. And I'm going to center that on this little square panel that I've got right here. And there we go. All right. Now then, this piece is going to have, in this case, it's going to have a holly leaf, a large holly leaf, underneath this kind of coming out on this side. So I'm going to need to add a little bit of glue to the end of this and stick that on here so that it's coming out. And I want to add another little piece of holly to the top of this. And so I'm going to add a little bit of glue to the top of this holly leaf. And add it right here in this corner. So there's that piece. All right, then I put uh, the other thing that I did use were these gold, um, what are they called? Gold holly leaves. And that piece, in fact, the seal isn't sticking. I'm going to add a glue dot, I think, to make sure that's on there and is secure. Add a glue dot to the back of that, and I'm going to stick that down right in here to add a little bit of that gold dimension there. And then I have a piece of this pine that I'm going to attach here to the top of this. I think I'm just going to keep using glue dots. Might be more efficient. So if I add a glue dot here, then I can attach it to this right here. And then I have one of my berries that I wanted to put right in here. So I'm going to do that with a glue dot as well. Setting that glue dot right in the middle and then adding that to the corner up here. And there was a small leaf in that. Um, position. I don't. You don't have to put it in exactly the same places that that I've done here, um, but I liked the gold kind of spread around a little bit. So this one is almost too big, so I'm going to fold it in half and stick this one. sort of right in here. There we go. And then this last one, I added a berry and a gold leaf, smaller gold leaf. And in this case, I think I'm going to add a couple of these smaller pines right in here, or a couple of the smaller holly leaves. Maybe a pine and a holly leaf. Okay, I think that's going to work. Now I'm just going to add some dimensionals. Now this is ready to go on the front of my card, centered on my piece of DSP. There we 
go. And isn't that nice? Now I did add one of these uh, berries over on this side. So I'm going to take another glue dot and do that. And there we go. That is the front of our card. Pretty well done. Now, in this card, what I used were these brushed metallic adhesive back dots. And I used the gold ones, the sort of smaller ones that I put around the card. And I thought on this one, since everything is so bright, that maybe I would use our uh, champagne gold rhinestones instead because I wanted to match the shiny. So I'm going to add one here um, and I'm going to dot a few around on the card. So that is the front of my card finished. Isn't that pretty? Oh my gosh, I just love this. All right, so now we're going to go to the inside of the card. And for the inside of the card, we have these two pieces. This, which is going to go centered on here. We're not going to add any dimension to that, but we are going to put a few decorations there and then our rhinestones kind of show through. Um, and we want these pieces flat on the inside of this card to make it easy to add your written, handwritten sentiment. So what we're going to do is just add some adhesive to the back of this card and put that into place by centering it on our card front here. Well, that's not straight or even. Let's try that again. There we go. That's a little bit better. All right, now then we're going to add this piece as well. And then I thought we could put a berry and maybe a couple of little holly leaves down here to, um, to add a little bit to the inside of this. And I'm going to use some glue dots for that. There we have our card complete. You know, I'm going to add one more rhinestone just up in a corner here. Just like that. Okay, so there we go. That is my project for the day. Thank you so much for stopping by my YouTube channel today. Um, I do so appreciate it. I appreciate all of you. <laughs> You, you have been absolutely wonderful to me. Um, and um, I hope that you have had a fantastic Thanksgiving um, and got to spend it with family and friends. And um, I did. I was very well supported by my family and just had a wonderful time. Um, they didn't give me a minute to think about. <laughs> Uh, my adversity and um, just kept my mind occupied with other things and catching up with uh, with folks I usually host so it's kind of a treat for me to have gone someplace else this year so uh, my brother had uh, hosted me at his house and I, I'm just there was so much to be grateful for and um, again, I hope you had a wonderful Thanksgiving holiday. So um, thanks again for stopping by. And let's see, it's still November. 
The join offer is still available till the end of the month. $125 worth of product. Instead of for $99, you get it for $75. And you might want to give yourself a Christmas present and become a demonstrator yourself and, and enjoy the discounts for ordering product. Um, so let's see. Um, the prize draw for this month is a $60 shopping spree on me. And you can put yourself in the drawing by making an order of any size on my store, lbedinger.stampinup.net. Um, and you can get to it through my blog, www.inkingenuity.com. So there we go. That's it. Um, and so I will be back soon with more cards, more projects, and more tips. Bye.